Okay, hello, hi. Hello, yes, it's uh, the year today, by the way, if you guys didn't know, hello. And 2014 is actually what I think a very good year to be doing web development. And me, like most of you guys here probably, well, probably all of you guys pretty much do things in a browser. And, and I think as a web developer, I'm just gonna share with you guys, I, I kind of feel like our profession is a little taken for granted around here. And uh, there's this pretty good studio that's pretty well known, uh, T. Han and Lex, and this is their tagline. It says, if it has a screen, we will design for it. And uh, it's, it's a very bold claim to make, and it's actually probably what every one of you guys do here day to day. Imagine that, if it has a screen, we will build for it, we'll design for it, and that is what we do, what I do, and what you guys do every day, and I think that's a brilliant thing, and all of that is like, what happened after like, decades of history of web development. So, at some point in the past, you know, web development wasn't really much, uh, no one really thought of it so much, you know, it is, we were pretty much content with things that looked like this. But of course, history happened, and at some point, people got together and said, like, hey, let's standardize this thing called HTML and stop fighting over what should be standards, and let's just mandate this is what should be going on moving forward. And this was something that was pretty hard to do over at that time, if you can understand, if you guys are familiar with these kinds of things. And that happened just last millennium, 1997. And fast forward many, many years, a couple of things happened until the invention of something called, uh, I believe it's called a smartphone. Yeah, uh, so that's the smartphone. Uh, yeah, so okay. Uh, might say I'm a little unfair calling that the smartphone because there were other smartphones before that. But the reality is after that came out, everything else just kind of looked like that anyway, so might as well. Anyway. Couple of, couple of more years going along. We have so many ideas. We have so many technologies coming forward, HTML5, CSS, and eventually we came into this whole idea of like, hey, maybe we could design for any screen in the world, which is the same things that we've been using the whole time. And turns out the, the technology to do that has been around for way too long. Media queries have been you know, it's been existing before anyone ever thought of responsive design. This is an article from Alistair Part, and that was just 2010, and media queries were already existing way back then. So that sort of thing just happened around 2010, and a couple of other things just came up, and we have so many things that we could do on a browser, on your computer, on your phone. We could get someone from one point of the country to another, and tell them the exact directions right on your browser, and we could play videos. We've made text editors, I think there's like two, at least two, I don't know, there's probably even more than that. Text editors, IDEs, made in just a browser. We've made games in a browser, but I think after all these developments over the years, there's just this one perennial problem that nobody has ever really solved elegantly in the realm of browsing and in the realm of web development, and I think that is vertical centering. <laughs> so that's it. I'm Rico Santa Cruz. You might know me around some open source projects as Arsta Cruz, and this is me talking about how to use Flexbox to save your sanity. All right. OK, going back to vertical centering. So I went to the internet. like. Everyone does it every day looking for answers. And I came across this. And it's been asked five years ago. And there's like so many answers. There's 14 answers on this one. And they had to lock the thread because people kept responding. And I'm, I don't know. At some point, I'm sure everyone has thought of like, how do you do vertical centering? And when I was like new to CSS, I mean, when, when this whole CSS positioning thing was just really taking off. I thought it was really easy, you know? It, I thought it was just like this. <laughs> so that's my first attempt, and probably everyone else's too, right? And this is, for those who haven't 
done that, this is what it looks like. So obviously that's not really gonna work. So you go back and see like, what did you do wrong? Maybe there's something you missed. Maybe center, not middle. And you go like, oh, I know, maybe you should use it to container. And after that, this is what it looks like. And you go back and still don't really know. Maybe it's both. And maybe it'll work. And this is, again, what it looks like. So it's not really the solution. So I, I went on the internet very recently and looked like, how, how do people solve this? So if you guys want to do that right now, go ahead. But I've done the research for you. I'm just going to show you, OK? If it's just one line, you do a line height trick, where you set the same line height for the same height. If it's a fixed height, you could do like a position absolute top 50% with a negative margin. You could do something like a table cell. You could do fixed margin top. You could do pretty much, I don't know, there's like 10 others. And I, I, I don't know, I ran out of space in the slide. So there, there's so many ways to do it. Anyway, moving forward, there's this thing called Flexbox. I'm not sure if you guys heard of it. I'm sure you guys have, but uh, I'm sure not everyone has really used it because you know, everyone's kind of averse to using it. Anyway, it's really, really simple. It's ridiculously simple, actually. Uh, there are very long articles. I was very intimidated about it, but it turns out it's all really broken down into just two basic things. You just set something on the container, set something on the, on the items, something called display flex and flex something. So it, it's very perfect for things like, for, for basically app UIs and you know, these kinds of things that kind of tend to pop up every now and then, like sidebars and menus and stuff like that. And there's a little quick, yeah, to dispel a couple of FUDs. Uh, Flexbox is actually pretty well supported right now. So these, is, these are the browsers that support the new version of Flexbox. Uh, there's actually two versions of Flexbox, the old one and the new one. This is the, the one with the support for the new ones. If you notice, these are very recent browsers. And if you go back to the ones that support the old syntax, uh, it's even actually way back when. It's Firefox 2. I don't even remember that. Uh, and Android Eclair. I, and that's pretty much 2006. So we've actually had browsers that support Flexbox for a while now. The only stickler here is IE10. So it's. It's not really good if you're targeting IE, but if you're making something that targets mobile, and iPads, iPhones, that's pretty good because you're probably not really caring about that so much. Anyway, and if you use Flexbox for things like these, these are pretty much what it's really made for. You just really set like a display flex on the container and you set something called flex in the items. And that's pretty much what all you need to do. And there's just three magic numbers, and they, they mean these things, basically. So all you really need to do is display flex on a container and the item, something called a flex property. And it just is really is three magic numbers. And uh, it looks intimidating. It's actually pretty simple. Grow is usually like zero or one. If it's one, it means it's flexible. If it's zero, it's not. You could actually use other numbers, but more on that later. And shrink is, what if it's too small? Am I, is, is the browser allowed to shrink it more than the basis? So basis is like the where it's based out of, you know, what, what it's default with, sort of. And it's actually pretty flexible. Uh, not all three are required. Sometimes you usually just specify one or two. So you guys could check out. Uh, you can, I'm posting a link later. So if you want cheat sheet of this out there. So you, you can just define which ones you really need. And in the real world, it probably look like this. So if you do something like a fixed height a while ago, it looks like 0, 0, and uh, whatever the height is. And if you want an extendable, it's just really auto, which is the same as 1, 1, auto. And it's pretty much, I don't know. I'm inclined to stop this talk right now because it's really most of the things you need to know. But anyway, let's go on. So if you want to space it out something like this, like evenly, you could actually put margins around, around each item and they would be honored by Flexbox. And it's just going to work like how you usually would expect it. You know, like 
you probably used margin zero auto at some point, and that thing just kind of works for vertical as well. And if we go back to the, the problem of vertical centering, it's, you're not gonna believe that this works, but it does. So that's just really it, and it gets vertically centered. Perfect, lovely. So uh, that's pretty much how you do a vertical centering. You just do a margin on the item, or the other way is you could also modify the container instead of the item to have more control. There's this a property called justify content. There's actually more possible values for this, but the ones you're probably gonna be using most is space around, which means even out the spacing vertically. And there's pretty much two of them. Justify content is like vertical, and align items is horizontal. And that would also get you a vertical center. And if you notice, this one you're styling a container instead of the, instead of the box, instead of the item, you're styling the parent instead. And that would be enough to get you to a vertical centering, just like that. And the fancy thing about this is, it's actually, right now, it kind of looks like how you would expect tables to work or something. But the really interesting thing to happen is, what if you combine that with media query? So what could, how could you make something that would work as well on a desktop and a tablet and a phone? And the thing is, since these are all just really CSS properties, then you could just restyle them anytime you need to, say, put a media query for a tablet and just want to change the flex direction from column, which is to make things vertical, to row. You just, it's just really one little property right there. And that's really perfect for things like, you know, when you're switching from tablet to mobile. And another thing is you could even reorder things without changing the DOM order. So you just go for that icon just went from right to left. And you just really have to change order this little CSS property called order, and you could just set an order for any one of those property, for any one of those elements, and you could just reorder them depending on your media query. So if you put all these things together, and you just put a little media query right here, and basically it says that whenever you're on a, you're on a phone, you're going to make it vertical, and you're going to reorder the app icon. So in re in practice, this is what it's probably going to look like. And that's it. You were able to make a menu with a very, very little modifications to your CSS. And uh, if anyone wants to follow along, uh, this, this example is actually posted over at GitHub. And I'll flash you a bigger URL later on. And basically, this entire thing is built out of Flexbox. Just really, every, it's like all the macro layout is all made out of Flexbox. And the fantastic thing is it's, you could also nest your Flexboxes. So you could have like three elements for your main columns, your main panes, and that's just your regular Flexbox kind of properties. So this one is on 20%, 80% on the other, put like min and max width just to make sure it doesn't collapse too far. And that's pretty much it. You're going to have like perfect columns, on a desktop at least. By the way, right, if anyone wants to follow along, I tweeted the link. You can just check out my Twitter and link is over there. And, and so this is what it looks like. Uh, play, no, okay. Whatever. So basically, you just do the same kinds of things wherein you take the, take this kinds of flex box kind of properties and put little media elements and just change the orientation from horizontal to vertical and you just get a really nice responsive <coughs> almost effortlessly. And, yep. So again, it's just really all nested flex box. So this is how it probably would look like on your typical app where you have like a horizontal kind of setup and would, would flatten out to a vertical one once you shrink your browser. And as you notice, like you could just hide one of the panes whenever you're in a mobile, just display none or something, and that, that would be fine. And just nest flex box within a flex box. So 
even the things inside the listing is a flex box in a flex box. So the menu, you saw that a while ago, the, and that listing is actually pretty simple, just like that. And in the past, we would probably do something like this in like position absolute, position fixed with like top left, bottom right, and fixed pixels. But now at least there's something more flexible. And, and the thing is you could, the wonderful thing here is if you want to add like say a search bar or something just right under it, it's pretty easy. You just insert another DOM element and put like another flex thing over there and that's it. You could, you could pretty much change UI up anytime you want. And if you notice, this actually is, turns out to be something that could actually work. And here it is with like, I don't know, like 40 additional lines of JavaScript to make it kind of do its thing. And that's it. We actually were able to make a, a pure CSS approach to this whole responsive deal. And there's no fancy JavaScript to like what happens when you size it down. You need to hide this and that. There's pretty much none. And all of that was able to be accomplished with Flexbox. By the way, right here. Here is the Twitter, and you can just check out the link over there if you want to look at the source. So what I'm trying to say is right now, when it comes to UI layout problems, it's pretty much solved when it comes to something that would be on mobile. And it's something that really makes you, lets you iterate things really, really fast. Because if you really want to rearrange things or just want to add and subtract and add new panels, new layouts, you're just really have to just add another element and Flexbox will take care of trying to lay that out for you. And if you try to go to like, you know, uh, different websites out there, uh, a couple of them could be solved with Flexbox really. So there are a couple of, there's a lot of uh, seasons of properties you could also use for Flexbox. Like say, for example, align self flex end is something you would probably use instead of float right, which a while ago, uh, pretty much said that floats are evil, so flexibilize is another way to get around it. And if you go to like the content area, it's pretty much the same kind of deal. And you can even use a sh shorter flexbox uh, syntax, just flex five and flex three. So basically, if you just specify the grow parameter, it's kind of trying to figure out which one's bigger and which one's smaller, and you know, based on each one's relative grow parameter. And yeah. Say this one too could be salt. Uh, it's pretty much everything is just really a grid. Everything is just uh, something that could be solved with nested layouts. And the fantastic thing is if you if you're able to do it, if you could implement like a layout like Slack over something like this, it could be responsive down to tablets. So imagine like you could just say hide the sidebar or I don't know grow to grow to other sidebars to make sure that it could also work in, in tablets. So most of, for the most part, it's something that is pretty much solved right now. And if you go to caniuse.com, the only thing that really is slowing down the adoption of Flexbox right now is IE, because the minimum thing, the minimum version that really supports Flexbox for real is IE, 10, IE 11. So, but as far as like the mobile, Mobile adaptation, even some of the older iPhones, older Androids are able to support it. So it, it's something that is actually pretty usable when it comes to mobiles. So if you're going to do something like a mobile UI, I suggest you give it a try. And that's it for me. So that's me, Rico. And that was a little intro on Flexbox. Awesome. Thanks, Rico.